hidden deep within the mountains of Aomori Prefecture, there exists a village called Sugisawa. One day, a man from the village went crazy. Within a single day, he killed everyone living in the village and then took his own life. Nobody knows why he went crazy, nor why he went on such a violent crime spree. But the end result of this horrific crime remained the same. Sugisawa village became empty. The events of that day were so cruel that the local government decided to leave the village abandoned and at the same time deny anything ever took place. They then erased all trace of the village from the local maps. Luckily, the village was deep in the mountains, so it was easy to cover the events up. But, of course, they couldn't erase the fact that the horrific crime did take place in the first place. There were rumours of thick bloodstains all over the village, and those who approached the village would undoubtedly be cursed by the evil spirits that lived there. Furthermore, according to the legend, it's impossible to reach Sugisawa unless you leave the straight path that leads further into the mountains. Then, you will find a sign with a warning standing at the entrance. That sign states, You may enter, but do so at your own risk. You can also find an old red shrine gate at the entrance and a stone shaped like a skull sitting at its feet. Hello, and welcome to Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and on this show we'll be looking at different urban legends from Japan, how they came about, and, when possible, the truth behind them. Before we get started this week, I have a quick announcement to make. Starting from Friday, the 24th of August, you can grab Toshiden, Exploring Japanese Urban Legends Volume 1 from Amazon for just 99 cents. If you haven't picked the book up yet, there's no better time. The book has been getting some really great reviews, which makes me really happy. So, if you've been holding out on getting it, grab it now while you can. It returns to full price next week, so don't miss out. Now, this week's episode is about one of my favourite cursed villages, the village of Sugisawa. The legend of Sugisawa village first appeared in the 1990s, although the events mentioned in the legend itself are purported to take place early in the Showa era, the late 1920s and early 30s. The story was one of the first and biggest to be spread, when the internet started to become more common in Japanese households in the 90s. It became so popular that several media outlets picked up on it, and it was through the TV show Kiseki Taiken Unbelievable in 2000 that it really reached the masses. The episode set out to find this fabled village and determine whether it actually existed or not. They searched throughout not just Aomori Prefecture, but similar stories all over Japan. But in the end, they never found it. The program then claimed that Sugisawa Village must exist in a space time warp, able to appear and disappear at will. After the program aired, many people set out to find the village themselves, uploading blog entries, and later YouTube videos on their findings, many of which you can still watch on the internet today. 
Despite claims to the contrary, nobody has ever found the real Sugisawa village of legend. And it's unlikely anyone ever will. The legend of Sugisawa village began in Aomori, the place the village is supposed to be located. There was a real village called Kosugi. It was a small village in the Obatakezawa district of Aomori city. This area received its name because of a mountain stream that flows through the cedar forest. Sugi means cedar and Sawa means marsh or mountain stream. People would say they were going to the cedar, which sounded a lot like the word Sugisawa in Japanese, and thus it came to be affectionately called that. However, the village was only accessible by foot, and as the years passed, it became abandoned because of depopulation, not a murderous crime spree. So, how did the benign village of Sugisawa become the fabled site of such a horrific crime? There was an actual crime in 1938, the same time the Sugisawa legend is supposed to have happened, that took place in the small village of Kamo, close to Tsuyama in Okayama Prefecture. A man, Mutsuo Toi, 21 at the time, killed 30 people and injured three others before killing himself. Toi had tuberculosis and in his suicide note claimed that the villagers treated him cruelly so he wished to extract revenge. He snuck into people's homes over the course of a single night and using a shotgun, katana and axe killed over half the village's occupants before killing himself at dawn. Although Okayama and Aomori are separated by quite a distance, somehow the story of this crime in Okayama was adapted to the abandoned village in Aomori and became the modern day legend of Sugisawa village. But how do you know that you've found Sugisawa village? There are several key signs that you have stumbled upon it. Number one, there is a sign at the entrance that states, you must not proceed past this point. There can be no guarantee for your life if you do. There are variations on the exact wording, but in every version, the sign states that if you go past it, you will be in big trouble. Number two, there is an old red shrine gate at the entrance to the village, beneath which you'll find a stone that's shaped like a skull. Number three, upon entering the village, you'll find several abandoned buildings with blood stains on the walls. Now, several people claim to have visited Sugisawa over the years. The following is a tale from someone calling themselves Matsusan. This is a story someone who went to Sugisawa village told me. They were driving up the mountain when they finally found a gravel road they could pass through when they saw a sign. They ignored it and kept going before they realized they'd arrived at Sugisawa village. The place apparently stank of garbage. There were a few wooden buildings and a lot of rubbish lying around. This person felt someone watching them though, and feeling creeped out, they left. A few days later, a friend who was with the person at the time died. And the following is from Keiko-san in Saitama. I went to Aomori Prefecture to go mountain climbing. About two hours into climbing 
The area was wrapped in fog, and I couldn't see well. I made my way slowly up the mountain so I didn't fall, and there were several villages along the way. Then it was like there was this village smack bang in the middle of the jungle. It was dark, so I pulled out my torch and approached it. There were six buildings in total, and I went from house to house checking each one. There was no sign that anybody lived there. All I saw were two cats. While I was walking around, I sensed somebody approaching me. Yet, when I looked around, nobody was there. It was incredibly strange. There were houses further back in the village as well, but I was too scared to go and look at them. About 20 minutes later, I noticed a man standing behind me. He was wearing a straw hat and had pale skin and blue eyes. I said hello, but he said nothing in reply. I paid him no attention and kept walking, but then he suddenly screamed and ran at me. I ran and finally reached the sign that stated I was back on the mountain climbing track. That was the first time I'd ever been so scared. I still don't know what that guy was doing there now. I told people about what happened there, but nobody believes me. And the following message was posted by somebody claiming to be a police officer in Aomori. Sugisawa Village exists. It's close to Aomori Airport. But you must never go looking for it. And please, don't enter it half-cocked. Because if you do, you'll never come back. Sugisawa Village is a perfect example of an urban legend being in the right place at the right time. While it was already popular beforehand, it wasn't until a TV show aired a special episode searching for the mythical village that it really took off, and it remains the most well-known missing village tale to date. You can still find people posting evidence of their adventures searching for it on the internet, and there have been various movies and even games made about it as well. I even played one of them on my YouTube channel. While Sugisawa may never have existed in reality, its legend will continue to live on for quite some time. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Don't forget, if you haven't picked it up yet, Toshiden, Exploring Japanese Urban Legends Volume 1, will be on sale starting this Friday, the 24th of August. And if you'd like early access to both this show and Kowabana, true Japanese scary stories from around the internet, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Tara A. Devlin. Every bit of support helps me to make these shows better and to bring you more and better content in the future. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you again next time for even more Toshiden. Exploring Japanese Urban Legends. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koobana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koobana.net now.